For example, it comes up in Factor and Remainder Theorem. It comes up in these sort of questions. If you have a look at the screen, it says for which values values is A either defined or undefined? Defined slash undefined. Very common question. And you've got to take whatever's inside your, your uh, square root sign and say A has to be either positive or A has to be negative and then solve. Very, very common question. It comes up in nature of roots, type 2, when they say, for example, for which values will, will the roots be either non-real or real? And then you've got to take your delta and you've got to solve an inequality. So inequalities is one of those things which you really should know backwards. And uh, stay tuned because I'm going to try and refresh your memory here with, uh, within this log inequality. Question is, and I'm not going to repeat the things, I think I still have the slide, so I might flash back to the summary that I gave a little bit earlier on in the show, but the question is this over here, I'll try and write it big so you can write it down, 2x minus 1, smaller than or equal to 1. Now, I spoke about certain things when I first came on. And uh, let's just see if they're still here. And it actually looks like, no, here they are. No, they're gone. Right. Forget that idea. I spoke about something called an aim. I said to you, well, right, here's my question. I said to you, remember that when you're working with inequalities, the very, the very first thing you need to do is try and get single logs on both sides. And the first example I did, there was only two logs in the whole question, and they were already on each side of the inequality. So there was nothing to do. In this case, you need to do some work to get that aim that I spoke about. And using your log laws, again, I'll put it in for you here, you've got this A, and you've got this B over here. There it is. And I've got log A plus log B is less than or equal to 1. And I hope you can see that it's very easy to create one log from these two logs by simply using the log laws. And remember, it's just going to become, I'm going to use a square bracket here, but it's going to become x times 2x minus 1, just like that. And on this side you have that. Now, remember the aim was getting single logs on each, sides, on each side. Now, 1 is not a log, so it's a problem. How do we deal with that problem? We need to change this thing into a log. Now, there was a log law that said, remember your log laws? It said that if you have log AA, it equals 1. Provided what goes inside your log is the same as the base, you can swap it around and make it a 1. In this case, the invisible base here is 10 by default. We just don't put it in. So all I need to do is change this 1 to a log 10, 10. Because log 10, 10 is 1. That way I create single logs on both sides. So let's apply that rule over here. I'm going to multiply in at the same time, giving me 2x squared minus x, 2x squared minus x. And on this side, I have log 10. Now, I hope you notice that I've created my aim. And the next part of the process, once you've got your aim, is to drop your logs on both sides. First, check to see if your base is either greater than 1 or less than 1. In this case, we've already mentioned that the base is 10. So clearly, 10 is bigger than 1. So I don't need to change my sign around. It's going to give me 2x minus x less than or equal to 10. I've now got, excuse me, that should be an x squared. That should be an x squared because x times 2x is 2x squared. I now have a very simple trinomial to solve. 2x squared minus x minus 10 less than or equal to naught. You might be questioning why this example is different to the very first example that I did. And you'll notice here that it's, it's not dealing with a linear inequality. I have this trinomial here. And when I have trinomials or anything that's not linear, I need to deal with critical values. You can't just factorize this thing. And well, let's factorize it first, and I'll show you a very common mistake. So the factors of, of 10 and 2 that will give you minus 4, I'm going to do it on the side here. So I take 2x and x. Factors of 10 are maybe 5 and 2, 5 and 2. That gives me 4x. You should all be pretty good with this. That gives me 5x. I'm looking for minus 1. It's minus plus, minus plus, 2x minus 5, and x plus 2. Now, 
lots of students will go and make this mistake. And I'm going to write it in red because this is something you mustn't do. They'll say, right, because it's an inequality, we deal with it in exactly the same way that we deal with equality or equal signs. And you see you get x is less than or equal to 5 over 2 and x is less than or equal to 2. Right? Very, very wrong. Very wrong. Very common mistake. That's why I'm mentioning it. Don't do it. You have to use CVs, critical values. Please make sure you don't make this mistake. Okay, it's a very impulsive thing to do to deal with it the same way that you deal with an equal sign. Unfortunately, it's wrong. The thing that you need to do is you need to write down, first of all, what your critical values are. And I'm going into this in detail to give you a, to give you a basic reminder on how inequalities work. Your critical values are, in this case, 5 over 2 and minus 2. Right? You plot them on a number line. So we take a number line. We put these things in order. In actual fact, I'm not going to do this part yet because what I'd like to do is I'd like to put everything on one number line. So you should be thinking, well, if I did put it on a number line, I'll give you a very basic show, but I'm going to combine everything a little bit later in actual fact. If I take minus 2, in this case, because of the smaller and equal to signs, I want to include both answers. So it's going to be solid dots, solid dots. Okay. And then I, I need to sub in values. So I choose a value less than minus 2, for example, minus 5. And you plug it back into the uh, factorized version of your trinomial. What happens when you plug minus 5 in here? 2 times minus 5 is minus 10. Minus 5 is an overall negative. Minus 5 plus 2 is an overall negative. And a negative times a negative gives you a plus. And remember, if you have no repeated CVs, or in other words, no repeated critical values, your signs will alternate. And in this case, the answer, because smaller than or equal to naught means negative, anything smaller than naught means negative, I'm looking for the place where I have negatives. And the answers to that will actually lie between minus 2 and five, minus 5 over 2. And if you compare that answer to what students do very often, where it says x is less than 5 over 2 and x is less than 2, well, clearly that's wrong because it's less than both of them. And the correct answer, it's actually bigger than the one. So, in actual fact, this should have been a negative. Not that it makes a difference. It's wrong in the first place. Don't do it. This is the correct way.